Can we all agree that it's pretty funny that everyone's excited about a boot where the main feature is not having the feature of another boot? I have for you today all three top end versions of the new Predator. The High Cut 20 Plus, the Mid Cut 20.1, and of course the one we've all been waiting for, the low cut version of the Predator Mutator 20.1, which retails for the same $225 as the mid. I was kind of expecting them to be a little bit less expensive. That is not the case. But as you can see, it does not have an unnecessary collar. And I say unnecessary not to offend anybody, but this, and especially this, totally doesn't add anything to the performance of the boot. But John, it keeps the rubber pellets from getting inside. So basically what we have here is what I think a lot of longtime Predator fans have been waiting for since the Predator Instinct got killed off in 2015. A low cut version of the Predator with some rubber elements. Does it have the fold over flap tongue or kangaroo leather upper? No, we can't have it all. But as far as modern Predators go, I'm actually really happy with these. So happy that I would go as far as to say that this is quite possibly my personal favorite football boot right now. So what we're gonna do in this video is talk about why I like these so much, go over all the details and differences in comparison to the other two top end Predator variations, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet, and ultimately determine whether or not these are worth the $225 retail price. So if you wanna learn more about them, please stick around, watch the entire review. And if you're interested in some of these for yourself, they're available now. I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal retail price. So given that this is very much the no-nonsense version of the Predator, what you get with the boots is also pretty no-nonsense, just a regular Adidas box. Although I did find the label pretty funny, it literally just says L to represent low. As to the boots themselves, everything that's going on is mostly the same as what you'll find on the Predator 20.1 mid, with a couple differences mainly across the top of the foot as well as of course the heel area. So I guess we'll start with those across the top of the foot. You still have a one piece construction, but you'll notice that the knit material itself is a completely different pattern with actually a liner on the underside, which is really soft and doesn't allow it to stretch quite as much as you might expect. And you'll also notice it's not under quite as much tension. So this is not a football boot that's designed to be worn laceless. I think that goes without saying, given that it does have a lacing system and lace holes, but you could probably get away with it with the 20.1, uh, the mid cut version that is. I would not try to do that with the low. It's just not made for it. And you can see they extended the area right here to give it a little bit of a flap, which I think really helps a lot with putting the boots on and taking them off. Is it entirely necessary? No, but I don't really have a problem with it. And of course that flows into what is kind of this bordered edge of elasticated prime knit material, which is there just for the sake of looks. Is this really a collar? No. Is it easy to be described as a collar? I guess so. And you'll also notice these little kind of inserted pads right here, which is kind of reminiscent of what we see on the modern Copa series, both the 20 plus and 20.1. Of course, the 19 generation models that came before it. The heel liner in general reminds me a lot of what you'll find on the current Copa 20.1, but for whatever reason, this is cut a little bit more narrow and honestly just fits and feels really, really good. Is it a drastic difference from the mid-cut version in terms of fit and comfort? Not really, but the feel seems to be more noticeable than I was expecting it to be. And just for anyone that's curious, here is a side by side by side comparison of all three Predator models. It's like a line graph. Aside from that, everything else about the upper is the same. It's still a textile based upper, technically not prime knit, that is exclusive to the 20 plus, but basically the difference between a textile upper and a prime knit upper and a fly knit upper and any other name that you give to a knitted material is the name that you give it. While this technically isn't the same prime knit that you find on the 20 plus, it feels pretty much identical once the boots are broken in and honestly, even out of the box. Very difficult to tell a difference in comparison to the previous generation of Predator, which had a thin, but somewhat padded feel to it. This knitted upper does not have any of that extra padding in it. So it just feels a lot thinner, kind of giving for a slightly more pingy sensation. And part of the reason why they took the padding out is because of the demon skin rubber elements, which are these diamond shaped pieces of rubber that are scattered throughout pretty much the entire foot. Basically, you're not gonna be making contact on the ball without making contact with at least 
I would say 50 of these rubber elements, which add a significant amount of grip. I know the Predator series is now marketed as being a control boot. I'll always view it as a power boot though. Ultimately, those are just marketing terms and don't really mean much. For me, what makes this special and what makes it relate back to some of those classic Predator models are these rubber striking elements and the extra grip that it provides. Is it gonna make your control better? Is it gonna make your shot more accurate or more powerful? Not necessarily, but I think it's pretty undeniable that the amount of extra grip, especially when it comes to shooting, I'm somebody that has a tendency to try to curl the ball, especially in a free kick situation. Having that extra grip, I think, really does make a difference in regards to how your foot interacts with the ball. Whether or not that's something that you want or need is totally a personal preference thing. In other words, it's not an advantage, it's just a difference in comparison to any other football boot. But the fact that it's such an impactful football boot technology, I think is really refreshing because if you gave this boot even to somebody that knows nothing about football boots, they would immediately notice that there's something different about these versus any other boot out there. It's kind of like Nike ACC technology, but actually real. Moving to the rear, again, it is a low cut design. We don't have to go over that. It does have an external heel counter like all the top end Predator variations do. Internally, you will find a synthetic suede lining material, very, very soft. Plenty of padding lockdown, I would say, is really good. And then the insole is fully removable. Nothing really different though in comparison to almost any other Adidas model. It says Predator 20.1, has this soft lining material on the surface and features a single layer of black foam. Moving to the base, you'll find the completely redesigned control frame. Of course, a name that carries over from the previous generation Predator, but a look and design that is completely different. It is now a split sole, which I know a lot of people have commented that this is a copy of the Nike Mercurial series because it also has a split sole. Now the Predator does too. The Predator series had a split sole well before the mercurials did so nobody's copying anybody here basically with a split sole construction you still have an internal sole plate it's just covered up to look a little bit cleaner and then of course you have a stud plate in the forefoot and a stud plate in the heel it does have some interesting cutouts to shave a little bit of extra material and of course weight the flexibility is really really good it's not overly stiff through the forefoot at all but still has nice rigidity through the heel and midfoot as far as the stud pattern is concerned it is not branded as fgag anymore more. Uh, and it's pretty much the same general layout that we've seen across the Adidas brand for basically 10 years now. The studs, as you can see this time around, are a little bit more narrow and sharper in profile, almost more of a true blade, but not quite there yet. A little bit more aggressive than what we had from the previous generation. And honestly, I think just an improvement overall. In terms of weight, I was a little bit surprised to pick these up and kind of get the sensation that they were a little bit lighter than the mid cut and high cut versions of the new Pred. And when I put them on a scale, I was a little bit surprised as well in a size 9.5 us you can see that they weigh in at 8.3 ounces the equivalent of 236 grams which is roughly half an ounce or 15 grams lighter than both the mid cut and high cut versions of the predator which is interesting because obviously when you take away the collar that's a significant amount of material that you're taking away as well i don't think that the weight difference is so significant where these just feel exceptionally light in comparison to the higher cut variations, but on an actual scale, the low cut version is technically lighter. So as you can see, I've swapped out the stock black laces, which admittedly look fine, but I've had a lot of requests for red laces in the new Predator. So here are some red reflective SR4U replacement laces, which obviously match the red bits that you have streaking through the front of the boot. I think it's a cool look, makes yours different from everyone else. A great way to change up the style of your boots in a very inexpensive way. So if you're interested in some for yourself, the website to visit is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in some for yourself, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, the low cut Preds feel really good. And I know I've talked about mid cut collars, not just on the Predator series, but on any boot, not really having an impact on mobility or just the feel of the boots in general. But in the case of this low cut Pred, not having the collar really does make the boot have, I guess, more sense of freedom to a certain extent, which is something that I'm personally a fan of. If you like the collar thing, go for the mid-cut version. I'm not necessarily saying that these are better, but me being kind of just somebody that never really felt the need to have a collar on my boots, I really like the way that these feel in general. As far as the fit in the heel is concerned, for those that are curious, it's not really that different from the mid-cut variation. I would say it fits a little bit tighter, which I actually like, but in general, 
there's not a huge difference. As far as the upper is concerned, it feels thin, it feels flexible. It doesn't really have a soft sensation because they did take the padding out of the textile base, but it still moves really nicely with your feet. Has more of a synthetic sensation to it, I would say. Across the top of the foot, the way they did the lacing system, as well as that kind of prime knit material, also feels really good, no complaints there. Lockdown is really nice as well. As far as fit is concerned, the new Predator 20 series does have a slightly different shape to it where they have kind of tapered in the midfoot where it fits a little bit tighter, but they've widened the forefoot and the toe box area. So it has a really snug, almost speed boot-esque fit through the midfoot, but then it's a little bit more roomy and spacious through the forefoot, kind of like a classic Predator would be, which again, I think feels really nice. Lockdown is excellent. In terms of width, I don't think these are gonna be ideal if you have really wide feet through the midfoot, but I do think they will fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order some for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. Like I've said before, I'm a really big fan of the new Predator 20 concept. I think that demon skin is a very clever way of enhancing grip on the ball by way of a rubber striking element, but because it's broken up into so many little pieces, it doesn't restrict the flex, the fit, and the movement of the upper like a larger traditional rubber striking element would. Now obviously this doesn't really relate back that closely to classic Predator models, mainly because it doesn't have a leather upper, but I think if you look back at the LZ1, LZ2, and Predator Instinct, the final Pred before they killed it off, this really feels like an evolution on that concept that they were building on back five years ago now. So for me, I really like this boot. I think what separates it from everything else is the added grip on the ball. If that's something that you're after, I think you're gonna be a really big fan of these. And honestly, I feel like everything that needed to be improved from the previous generation Predator has. The fact that it's also low cut or available as a low cut now, I think is an added bonus as well. And honestly, there's just not much for me to criticize about this boot. I think it looks the part, I think it feels the part, and it has something that is truly unique about it, something that we don't see often enough in the modern football boot industry. Anyways guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in some of these boots for yourself, the low cut version is available now. First link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below the their normal $225 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.